What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Last episode I was working on the brake calipers, rebuilding those. Today I wanna get them finished and mounted on the car. I also picked up a slave cylinder a little while back and I wanna get that mounted on the car too so I can give my radiator and fan a little bit more clearance. First, this is the mess of all the car parts right now for the brakes that I gotta get mounted back on the car. Whew. I'm waiting for some warmer weather so I can get all this stuff thrown out that is bad and get these organized nicely, but it's so cold. These were off the front brakes from before. I washed these nicely. Uh, these I'm gonna keep. And the front pads as well, the previous owner pretty much replaced these guys, so I'm just gonna clean these up with the wire wheel and get those back on the car. The guide pin boots, those were in good condition, so I just cleaned those up and we'll get those back on the car too. Rotors for the front. Brake pads for the, the rears, brake rotors for the rears. I had to get myself some uh, boots for the rears and some new slide pins for the rears as well. But other than that, in this mess of everything is the stuff I need for the brakes. So I think these are the banjo bolts. You can see this one's pretty good condition. I got that one off, but I looked at this one and this one just looked a little weird and actually is uh, cracked in there. So this one has to be replaced the other two that I have apart from this one are in good condition. All right, so we're gonna put on the old rotor, which is pretty much a brand new rotor when I got my conversion. These little screws here that help hold the rotor in place, we'll just put a little bit of anti-seize on there because these can be quite difficult sometimes to get off. All right, next will be the bracket. And I am still using my existing shims that I had with the conversion as well with the boots for the guide pins. I'm just going to put a bit of some silicone inside here on this opening right there. And we'll get those boots on. Nice little blob. Next we'll get this guy on. Which can be a little difficult. There you go, that's one. There we go. All right, so that's ready. Shim's on there. All right, so that's done now. And we're gonna go ahead and put this guy on. 17 mil bolt on the bottom and on the top. Tighten it down. And torque these two guys at 80 foot pounds. Next we'll get the guide pins all uh, lubricated. There's still lots of life on these guys. I've gone ahead and kind of just cleaned up this area right here where it will sit inside the shim. We'll get some anti seize on there so we don't have any seizing problems. But you should always coat this with anti seize. Both sides. Slide it in. And lastly, we will get the caliper back on. After that, torque these down to 24 pounds, and that's it. Moving on to the rears, these are a little trickier to get these boots in, so what we'll do is we'll just put a very small amount of grease inside there. We'll get our new boots. It's a little harder to do. Pinch it right in there nicely. There we go. That's actually pretty good. Holy moly, there we go. For those of you who are wondering, the front brakes, that is the caliper number 94 to 01 Integras. And these are the rears, they are 7 CLP 13S's, also from 94 to 01 Integras. These are what I needed for my conversion. We're running 10.5 on the front and 9.4 to be exact on the back. Well, 10.4 on the front, 9.4 on the back with the rotors. I also picked a while back a 15 16 master cylinder and a 15 16 brake booster. With the rotor size that I have, that should be plenty uh, for that. If I was to go any bigger, I would probably need to upgrade to like a one inch brake booster and master cylinder. I have to go to the junkyard tomorrow and pick up a new proportioning valve for my brake lines. Uh, the mounting point right there on the very back end. I don't know if it's gonna focus, but it's cracked in there. 
So I have to replace that, so I'll pick one tomorrow and I can start working on making these custom brake lines. I also have my hydraulic hoses, which I picked up some brand new ones here. I'll link these up in the description. I needed these for the conversion that I have so they fit properly. And that, the rear brakes are done, as well as the front brakes. There's a lot of videos, guys, online that do a lot more detail on replacing brake pads and everything. I just quickly threw these together on the fronts and the rears. A few of you have addressed this to me that you still believe that this will probably make contact. A lot of you guys either use a push system with your fan so you'll have the fan on the opposite side um, near the front bumper. I really don't want to have that because this will reduce the efficiency. What I need to do and what I'm going to do is replace this slave cylinder. I have an Integra slave cylinder. So this bleeder nipple right here is actually gonna point downward roughly at like a 30 degree angle compared to this 90 degree right here. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. First, just have to take the radiator back out. There we go. So we're gonna loosen up this nut right here to loosen off the clutch pipe from the slave cylinder, 10 mil. Next, you'll we'll need to remove the two bottom 12 mil bolts. Just go bit by bit, back and forth until you get that off. All right, so here are the two slave cylinders, one from the Prelude and one from the Integra. This is the difference in height on them. There's quite a difference when it comes to the Integra. A lot more um, flat and should give us plenty of clearance. One thing that is different though, the mounting holes are a lot closer together, so we actually have to modify the Integra slave cylinder by drilling out the hole a little wider so it can fit on the H22 engine. So I actually thought of something better instead of drilling this out because drilling this out will actually be pretty tough. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna grind out a opening, basically just a slot. So this will have one position where it'll mount onto the motor and then the other half will be just cut out so they'll just be like a U-shape opening. Whoops. It'll just be like a U-shape opening so we can just kind of slot it in. It's not gonna shift or anything on us. It's gonna be locked in place as long as one of them is locked in. This is just gonna keep it from going up and down and being loose. We'll just have a spring washer on, the, on that bolt and this shouldn't go anywhere. I'm thinking something just like this, straight cut. So there we are, that's the cutout, and that bolt slides up and down that nicely. I'm just gonna go ahead and test fit this on the on the motor, but I think this should give us lots of clearance. One thing I did is I kind of just grinded the left side where my thumb is, the top half there, I kind of grinded it to the left downward so it can um, just have a little bit better of a direction with the push rod here. I felt like it was just wasn't straight enough. So I'm also gonna put a washer or two on the right hand side over here on that side um, just to have that push rod a little bit straighter when it's sitting inside. I actually put on a different um, washer here that can actually have a little bit more surface area. Actually with this, I did something a little different here. So I was having a hard time installing this and getting this threaded on. So I uh, took this completely off, got about three or four rotations in there. And since I, le I left also the left side bolt pretty much still rotated in that I can actually um, take advantage of that cutout that I had, slide it in just like that. Also easier just to take off the front bumper. Now that everything is tightened down, we can go ahead and reassemble everything. So we'll put the radiator back in. So there we are with the complete installation of that Integra slave cylinder. A little bit of modification to it, but definitely something that will stay away from those fins on the fan on the radiator, allowing me to keep it still as a pull system here. I also got some uh, hoses finally. This one just came in and it's like a flexible hose that I was able to cut down. 
Uh, got everything fastened in. I got the reservoir in there. Still need that little tube that connects from here to here. I want to actually get the car jacked up on those wooden planks that I made a long time back, like in the very beginning of my episodes when I was doing body work, just because I need more height underneath. Also, it'll be easier for me to get that gas tank installed as well. Uh, that's going to be it for today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I'll see you guys later.